Amen. You may be seated this morning. And uh, I just want to uh, say it's good to be home. Amen. We just came back from Youth Convention 2024, and we had a mighty move of God. Young people were filled with the Holy Ghost, rededicated their lives to the Lord. It was a phenomenal experience. I know my daughter had an incredible time at Youth Convention this year, and me and my family love Youth Convention. If you'll notice, uh, my voice is hoarse from shouting and from worshiping and from saying amen. We have such a powerful time at Youth Convention of renewal. Everybody say renewal. I'll just let you in on a little secret. Even pastoring a church, there comes a time in your walk with God where you need a time of renewal. You need to be refilled with the Spirit of God. You need to be refilled with the power of God. Thank you. And uh, I feel like it's important to know that because we get tired. We get burned out. We get wore out. We get uh, just going through the motions. And I want to minister to somebody today before I minister to everyone today that you need a renewal. And luckily, on Palm Sunday, a week out from Easter, we know that he is risen. He is alive. Our God is risen. He is alive. And He is here to renew and to empower and to strengthen you in your walk with God. And and what He's given me to preach this morning, I'm excited to preach. Because I know it's going to renew somebody spiritually, emotionally, physically. I'm telling you, in every area of your life, even financially, God wants to bless and He wants to bring new life. That being said, I, I want to go to the book of Revelation today. If you have your Bible, your Bible app, everybody online, we want to greet you today for joining us here at Life Point. If you want to turn to the book of Revelation chapter 4, we're going to go to verse 4 and then we're going to jump down to verses 10 and 11. Chapter 4, verse 4 is where we're going to start. Then we're going to jump down to verse 10 and verse 11. While you are turning there, I just want to let you know that this is the year of increase. Amen. I don't want you to forget that. What God has been doing, um, I've been hearing reports. I've been hearing praise reports and, and great blessing and, and God's power. Amen. Is giving the increase here at Life Point more and more. Somebody say, I'm next. Come on, praise God. You can have faith in believing that God gave us a word for 2024, and that is a year of increase. Amen. Revelations chapter 4, verse 4, jumping down to 10 and 11. The Bible says, round about the throne were four and twenty seats, or twenty-four seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns, of gold. Everybody say crowns of gold. Jumping down to verse 10, again the Bible says these four and twenty elders fall down before him, who I personally believe is Jesus here. Somebody say amen. That sat on the throne and they worshiped him that liveth forever and ever, and they cast their crowns down before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Can we give God some praise this morning that he is worthy? O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you have created all things. And just for a moment, I, I want to go to a place spiritually that I believe, again, is going to be a place of blessing and reward for the people of God. And I want to preach a message entitled, Casting Crowns. Everybody say, Casting Crowns. 
Let's pray. Lord, move in our midst, touch, bless, encourage. Let your word go forth, God, and multiply. Your word declares it will not come back. It will not return void. And today, God, that somebody here under the sound of my voice, somebody online today watching this sermon, maybe a week from now, God, is going to receive the promise of your word of God, of this great blessing in your word that promises the church that we will cast down crowns. We will, God, have rewards. We will, God, be walking in your perfect power until the time, God, when we lay it all down at your feet. And everybody said in Jesus' name, come on one more time. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise because he's worthy to be praised. The identity of the four and 20 elders or 24 elders in this passage has been interpreted by many as referring to the 12 patriarchs of the Old Testament and the 12 apostles of the New Testament, casting down their crowns before the throne of God in heaven. Now, now a lot of symbolic references are made in the book of Revelation and it's easy to to misinterpret or to look past some of the things that the Bible is clearly showing us in Revelation unless you look at it symbolically and something we can look at here is whether it's the Old Testament or the New Testament this represents God's complete work as all of heaven rejoices uh, before the throne of God and it has a uh, great white throne uh, judgment implications and again a uh, for all eternity. Praise God. I want to worship Jesus. How many people here want to make sure you go all the way? You want to make heaven your home? You want to have your name in the book and all the rewards and the treasure in heaven that's waiting for us. Amen. The Bible says that God has prepared a place for us, his people. We are prepared people for a prepared place. Amen. Now, this vision is being described and it's being recorded by the Apostle John the Revelator. Some critics of the interpretation of the 24 elders being the patriarchs and the apostles say, how could John be seeing himself in the vision as one of the 12 apostles and not specifically mention it? However, much of the book of Revelation we know is a future prophetic look at events yet to come to pass. So this would explain why, perhaps, that God would show John a vision of his future involvement in this dramatic and powerful act of worship before the throne of God. Did you know today you're going to be shown things by God that you may not understand today, but God is showing you things to come. God is in eternity. We are in time. God can show you things that you can recognize from your past, and he will also show you things about your future. And sometimes we have a hard time reconciling those things until the perfect season comes in the fullness of time before that word makes perfect sense in your life, and it shall come to pass. Somebody say, it will come to pass. At the perfect time, it will make perfect sense. And some of us say, God, when I'm ready, you show me, and I'll wait and have patience until it comes to to pass. Amen. Okay, some have suggested the 24 elders are angels or perhaps even that they represent 24 symbolic groups of the Old Testament Arianic priesthood. However, angels are never referenced in scriptures to be given a crown or ever wearing a crown, but the church is referenced to be rewarded with crowns in many separate instances. And as for the priesthood reference, it's detailed in the book of First Chronicles concerning the 24 groups of the priests who were ordained for their service in the tabernacle. It's important to get the, to the bottom of what you're preaching about. You need to investigate. You need to discover. If you're going to look at what the Bible says, you need to understand it from Genesis to Revelation. Can I get an amen? That's what studying to show yourself approved is all about. You need to know what you're talking about. And I have no business preaching about 24 elders casting crowns down unless I investigate why. 
why the Bible is showing us this prophetic picture in the book of Revelation of this future event for all the church to rejoice and to make heaven their home. It's a beautiful picture of worship to God, and I want to be a part of the number. The Bible says there is a people without number. There is a multitude without number that are dressed in right in white in, in their robes around the throne of God, worshiping. Uh, saying Hosanna, saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And I want to tie that together. So this is the Palm Sunday where, where Jesus was had a triumphant entry into Jerusalem and they all rejoice and laid down palm branches. How many people remember the story? And, and I've done that before. I, was, I remember last year we had palm branches laid out, amen, in the altar. And we cried, Hosanna, we worshiped. And I want you to understand that just like my wife was leading us into worship, that she said, imagine that the king is here. How would we react? And on that day when we rejoice and we worship him and we are with him for eternity, we are going to worship him and rejoice in its presence forevermore, it's going to be wonderful. So we also know the church is again referred to as the priesthood of all believers or the royal priesthood in the book of First Peter chapter 2. So all that being said, I think it's safe to say this morning that whether the 24 elders are the 12 patriarchs and 12 apostles or they are a symbolic reference to the New Testament church shown to us in an Old Testament pattern of the Arianic priesthood regardless for the purpose of what I feel God wants me to preach this morning, I want to draw your attention right now to the 24 elders' reward and to the crowns that they had all received. Somebody say reward. Life point, there are many rewards for faithfulness to God and for righteousness in this life. Did you know that every time you come to church, every time you read your Bible, every time you pray and get closer to Jesus, that you are banking treasure in heaven? There are rewards. We're not doing this for nothing. We're not doing this, I've said this a lot, just for fire insurance. Come on, we are doing this because we love Jesus. And there are rewards in this life and in the world to come for our service to him. We know the Bible says that eternal life is the reward of those who obey the gospel. This reward is for every born-again believer, for those who are born of the water and of the Spirit, and those who live a holy life. In the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 3, the Bible says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. How many people are looking forward to that day? What a reward to be in the very presence of Almighty God. The Bible says when the new Jerusalem, the tabernacle of God, is with men at the end of time, that God will finally dwell with us. That God himself will be with us and he will be our God and we will forevermore be his people. What a reward that will be. What a day that will be when we dwell with God in all His glory, to see Him as He is in the fullness of all of His power. That would be enough, amen, just to be with Him. But in verse 4, the Bible says there's more. Everybody say there's more. The Bible goes on to say in Revelation 21 and 4 that there is another great reward that I'm looking forward to, that God shall wipe away every tear from our eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither there shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Are you glad this morning? That God's getting us ready for a glorious meet and greet in the air. 
and he's making right everything that's been made wrong since the beginning of time. No more crying, no more dying, no more death, no more pain. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to the reward of eternal life with Jesus Christ. I'm looking forward to the reward of eternal life and spending time with God for eternity, being in His presence, seeing Him as He is. Time does not permit me this morning to preach the many, many, many rewards that are promised to God's people in the Word of God, of our inheritance and of our treasure in heaven or the promise of a long life that God will satisfy us with or how about some righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost or even just being in God's presence here today. Amen. The Bible says that's where there is fullness of joy and pleasures at His right hand forevermore. All these rewards can be ours and more. I'm here for it. Amen. I want those rewards. I want to walk in those blessings. I want to know Him in this life and experience His presence and His power. And I want to get on those rewards. Amen. I believe that so many of us as believers, we live beneath our privilege of what God has for us. Sometimes we think about spiritual things in in some far off kind of uh, way that it's somewhere, you know, beyond the blue. Someday I'm going to have those things. But let me tell you in the Holy Ghost today, God wants you to walk in blessing in His promises now, today, on Sunday, here, Palm Sunday at Light Point. God wants you to receive that you have the ability to walk in His blessing, His promises, and His rewards today. Everybody say today. Turn to your neighbor and say, like right now. Those rewards can be ours. Amen. I, I just want to preach simple today. Amen. Sign me up for some of that. I'm here for it. I'll take a double portion of that packed down, shaken, overflowing, blessed and highly favored of the Lord kind of reward. I want it all. I want it all. Rewards for faithfulness. Rewards for righteousness. But right now, right here, I want to quickly preach this morning about five crowns. Everybody say five crowns. Five crowns or five rewards for about another 15 minutes. Church, I just need about 5 to 15 people to help me preach this morning. Come on, about these five crowns, these five rewards. Let's get into it. Number one, the crown of life. The crown of life or the martyr's crown. James 1 and 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Revelation 2 and 10 again says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. Now, church, showing up first on the list is the crown of life, or what has been called the martyr's crown. Even though it's first on the list, I suggest that you get this one last. A martyr is somebody who dies for Christ. Amen. You want to get this one last if you want the other ones. Amen. This crown will be bestowed upon those who persevere under trials or to those who are faithful under persecution unto death. They will receive as a reward in heaven the precious prize of the crown of life. Let me tell you this morning, if something or someone backs you into a corner where you have to lay down your life for what you believe in, I'm telling you there's a reward that God's going to make it worth it all. That if you have to die for your faith, God will bless. God will tell you now. 
to make up your mind that it's going to be worth it all and to trust Him, for there is a great reward in heaven called a crown of life for you. Second one, second crown is called the incorruptible crown or the imperishable crown. 1 Corinthians 9.25 says, Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they only do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Paul addresses the temporal or a temporary reward for those during his time who ran races or who fought or those who competed in games. He addressed the many people who strove for the mastery, perhaps in hard training for the Olympics, for example. All for a corruptible or a perishable or a temporary crown, like a wreath, perhaps, a victory that was placed upon their heads that for only a moment this crown was given as a reward. But Paul said that those who demonstrate self-denial and perseverance, self-denial and perseverance in this life to bring God glory only to those who do not seek glory in this life for themselves, but seek only the glory of God. To these saints of God will the incorruptible and imperishable eternal crown be given. I'm telling you, it may be nice for you to have your own parade. It may be nice if somebody uh, won the Olympics and they were given a reward or a trophy or some type of honor in this life. As you live for God, you may feel like you're not noticed. You may feel like you're only in the background. But I want to tell you, there's a crown for you that God has set aside. There's a an imperishable crown for all eternity that's going to make it worth it all for you to be humble in this life and for you to trust God's plan for your life. Imperishable crown. The third crown is the crown of righteousness or the crown of consecration. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8, is this good this morning? Come on, I want to hear about these rewards. Pastor wants all these crowns. I just want you to know I want to collect them all. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8, the Apostle Paul again says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only but also unto them that love His appearing. Are you looking forward to the second coming of Jesus? I love His appearing. I'm excited that Jesus is coming back. This crown is promised to those who love and anticipate the second coming of Jesus or to the believers who desire true intimacy with God. True intimacy with God Those who want to be close to God. Those who want to be rapture ready. Unto these saints will be given the crown of righteousness. I want to take you to a place today. I want to take you somewhere just for a minute right this way. Everybody come here as I open this door to my prayer closet. The Bible says close the door behind you. Go to a place with God and pray and talk to Him. Not so that everybody thinks you're spiritual. Not so everybody thinks you've got it all together. But because you just love going to the secret place with God. And when you bend your knees and you pray to God and you say, Lord, just one more time. Let me feel your presence. Let me feel your power. If you desire intimacy with God. Listen, so many people just have the traditions of men after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. Do not settle for religion when you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Go to your prayer closet and talk to Him for yourself. Know Him for yourself and desire intimacy with God and there will be a crown of righteousness laid up for you. No prayer, no power. If you want to see God raise the dead and heal the sick and do miracles in your life, you've got to touch the power. 
You've got to go to the throne every day in prayer. Now, the crown of glory or the clergy crown. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4 says, Concerning elders or leaders, the elders which are among you I exhort. He said, I'm preaching to the leaders. I am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. Also, come on, leaders go through some stuff. He's saying, I see your suffering, the sufferings of Christ. And also, you are a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Everybody say glory. Feed the flock of God. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. I feel like telling somebody today, so many people don't rise to leadership in the church to volunteer or to get involved because they feel, I'm not a good example. I can't lead anybody anywhere. But let me tell you, if you pray and you seek righteousness and faithfulness with God, He will use you in your brokenness. Peter, the apostle, failed God three times. He denied Christ. He said, I don't even know Jesus. But then three times Jesus said to him, do you love me, Peter? And he said, you know I do. And he was restoring him even though he'd failed God, even though he had denied Christ. He said again another time, do you love me, Peter? He said, Lord, you know that. The third time he asked him, do you love me? He said, yes. That means three times God forgave him for the three times that he failed God and he denied God. But listen to this. He said, feed my flock. Feed my sheep. Feed my people. These elders, I'm telling you, like myself, I'm not a perfect man. I make mistakes. I fail. I fall. I do my best to love every person and to preach the Word of God. But when I fall, Jesus asks me, do you love me? Do you love me? I say, yes, Lord. He says, keep doing your job. Feed the flock. Love the people. Preach my Word. And I'm telling somebody today, you're a leader and you don't know it yet because you're in failure or you're broken. But I promise you, God can forgive you and restore you and God can use you. Amen. He says, feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof or the responsibility, not by constraint, but willingly. Just because somebody has responsibility, they might do it because they have to do it. I don't do this because I have to do this. I do this because I get to do this. This is a privilege to preach the Word of God. This is a privilege to serve God's people. Not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre. There's a preacher, and his name is Filthy Lucre. He only preaches for money. That's called a hireling. God's telling me to explain this right now. I want to to educate this one. If there's a preacher and he's only preaching for an offering, then he's not a man of God. He's a hireling. He's doing it for the money. I heard it said before that a real preacher is not doing it for the income. He's doing it for the outcome. He's doing it for the people. He's doing it because he loves the people. Watch out, watch out for Phil T. Luker, that kind of preacher. He's just a hireling. But not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage. I got no business telling you how to live your life and all the choices you ought to make. I'm not here to control you. I'm not here to push you around and tell you what to do. I'm not a lord over God's heritage. You have a relationship with God yourself. But I'm here to help you. I'm here to guide you. I'm here to defend you. I'm here to pray for you in any way I can help you. But I'm not here to tell you what to do. You have your own free will. And you have your own walk with God. So leaders, don't be uh, a, a lord over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Everybody heard this before? Preachers got to practice. Practice what they preach. Nothing worse than a hypocrite in the pulpit. That's why humility is necessary. And I said it before, I said it again. Uh, this church is not a perfect church because I am a member. Amen. But I do my very best to be an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd, everybody say chief shepherd. When the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory 
that fadeth not away. Oh, Lord, some days it's hard to pastor, but I feel like, praise God, there's going to be a crown of glory. This crown of glory is also discussed in 1 Peter chapter 5 and is granted to Christian clergy who shepherd the flock in unselfish love, to those who are a good example of Christian virtues, to those called to the fivefold ministry, to those who are bishops, elders, or the presbytery, those who perform governments or helps, they will receive a crown of glory. Amen. And finally, you know, you know what? I, I want to say something. Pastor John's not here, so I'm going to talk about him. Amen. Maybe he's going to watch online. He'll know I, I, I'm talking about him. Amen. But Pastor John, he's a fine example. Uh, he's such a great leader. We love him here. What he's doing for God is noticed. And there's going to be a crown of glory for him. Amen. Everybody, everybody getting involved, learning and growing and moving into leadership. I honor you today. Finally, the crown of exaltation or the crown of rejoicing. Everybody say rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing will be given to those who engage in evangelism and making disciples. I want to explain something to you. Those signs at the back are not there just for decoration, but they do not look nice. Don't they look nice? Everybody look at them signs right there. Oh, those are so nice. Yes. Loving God, loving people. What does it mean? Loving God means becoming a disciple. Dedicating your life to Jesus, living to the best of your ability, a holy and a pleasing life unto him to please God. Now, what does loving people mean? Making disciples. See, first we must become a disciple or we won't be able to make disciples. How, you got to practice what you preach. How can you make a disciple? How can you win a soul if, you ha if God doesn't have all of you? You have to be 100% one to God, then you can win others to Christ. So we love God by becoming disciples. We love others by making disciples, bringing people to church, teaching them what we know. We don't have to know everything. We just have to know the basics of the gospel and teach those things and live our lives as an example to that person. Amen. That's how we make disciples or we win souls. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 19 through 20. This is the last one. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Did you know that that crown of rejoicing is already present in the church? Those people you've won to God. They're saying, you are my joy. I rejoice. I want to tell you, every time I teach a Bible study, every time I pray somebody, pray with somebody and they get the Holy Ghost, every time I see God doing something new in each and every one of your lives, I rejoice and I thank God that I'm saved, that I'm still on fire for God, and I stay on fire for God because my joy is in the church and seeing new people come to God. Philippians 4 and 1 Philippians 4 and 1 says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for my crown of joy. Wouldn't that be wonderful if somebody called you that? Stefan, you're my crown of joy, bro. So stand fast in the Lord. My dearly beloved, the Apostle Paul would have earned the crown of rejoicing after winning the Thessalonians to faith in Jesus. The same reward of this crown is calling to us today. And now the Great Commission commands us. God's Word challenges us in those powerful words of Jesus. To go ye therefore into all the world, teaching all nations. Those red letters compelling us, preparing us, to reward us, to run the race with patience, to endure, to persevere, even unto death if necessary. Come on, church, the crown of life. The incorruptible crown, the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, and the crown of exaltation, or the crown of rejoicing, and the soul winner's crown, or the clergy crown. For those who God has called to the ministry, all these crowns are calling us as God's people today, calling us to those who desire an intimacy with God. 
to those who look forward to His return, to those who seek an eternal reward, not just the temporary rewards of men, but seek after these precious promises, these eternal rewards are for the church to covet, are for the church to collect. Amen. While it is yet day, for the night cometh when no man can work. We got to get after it. These are the rewards that are offered every believer. First of all, we got to believe in them. Second of all, we got to go after them. While it is yet day, because the night cometh when no man can work. How many people know that this world's getting dark? Come on, this world's getting dark, and, and, and we got to do what we can, but the Bible says persecution will come. Pretty soon it's going to be illegal to go to church. That's when we're going to find out if we really believe. When the night comes when no man can work, we ought to rejoice now. We ought to worship now. We ought to preach now. We ought to go after these rewards now while we have the chance. These five crowns, five specific rewards with a prophetic look today at 12 patriarchs, 12 apostles, 24 elders, or a royal priesthood all casting down golden crowns in worship to the one who wore a crown of thorns. Let's all stand this morning. If the music would come back, if you will stand with me this morning. I want to take you to that place. John 19 and verse 1 through 5. The Bible says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. They whipped Jesus until the bones in his back were exposed. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and they put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and they said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. And Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you. The Bible says in this moment that he was marred more than any man. When they ripped the beard off his face that you could see his teeth. When the blood poured out, he shed that blood, that blood for you and me. He suffered and he died for us. That in this moment, the Bible prophesied that he was marred more than any man. And this, this ruler said before the people, I find no fault in him. Jesus came forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. Just for a moment, let there be silence. Could you imagine standing before Jesus in that situation. With the blood that ran for you and for me. Mocked and ridiculed like many do in this life. Ridicule our faith. Ridicule our Lord and Savior. But who could stand before Jesus Christ in eternity with his nail-scarred hands and having on his brow a crown of thorns after having been given many rewards or a crown of gold having been given eternal life having been rewarded beyond measure who wouldn't then cast down their crown and fall down before him in worship. Who seeing that would say, I've got crowns, I've got rewards, I've got eternal life, and now I'm in the presence of Jesus Christ forever. And when you see him, and he's humble with the crown of thorns, would you not take that crown off your head and lay it at his feet? And we will begin to rejoice and worship him for what he's done for you and for me. I want to say it again to somebody today. 
what God has done for you, what God will do for you in the year of increase, what God is doing in this moment for you. There is an eternal reward. Don't give up now. Don't turn back now. Don't lose your reward. Don't give up on your passion to grow in God and to move forward and to go after these rewards because I promise you on that day, it's going to be worth it all. I want to I want to open this altar today as we sing. If you want to come and pray, if you want to pray in your seat as we sing, as we worship together, may God reward us for being faithful, for being righteous, for making disciples. That's it. If you want to come forward, let's fill this altar today. For enduring hardship, for laying down our lives if necessary by faith to his mission for his glory. And I want to challenge you today. I want to ask you, if you want to come forth today, why don't you cast your crown down today? Why don't you lay down what God's already done for you now? Can you rededicate? Can you recommit? Can you lay down what God's done for you at his feet today? Lord, I thank you, God, for your mercy. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, God, that we're going to cast our crowns.